The U.S. says that it will not, and specifically President Joe Biden uh, said that he will not support an Israeli strike on Tehran's uh, nuclear sites following Iran's missile attack on Israel. Joe Biden made the comments after a phone call with G7 leaders from Canada, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Japan, and the UK. Uh, U.S. and its allies are trying to de-escalate tensions in the region ostensibly in an effort to avoid an all-out war, which I do think is true. Uh, and they're urging Israel to show restraint as it weighs retaliation against Iran. Meanwhile, Israel continues its simultaneous attacks on Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria with significant, significant civilian deaths. Uh, today, the IDF extended its evacuation warnings in Lebanon, which means uh, they're going deeper into civilian territory and they're expanding their ground invasion. And nearly 30 healthcare workers were killed in Lebanon in a single day. That's according to the World Health Organization. <clears throat> I mentioned the source partly because it's good practice, but also because so often people deny uh, the legitimacy of these death reports. Uh, by acting as if they come out of, you know, out, out of people's brains or out of people's butts, you know, <laughs> we would make it up. Anyway, access to medical care is becoming uh, extremely limited as three dozen healthcare facilities and five hospitals were either partly or fully uh, evacuated. Now, you might be saying right now, this sounds awful familiar. Well, it does. We are watching the exact same playbook that was run in Gaza be run right now. We're watching the exact same pain, the exact same recklessness, the exact same indiscriminate violence, the exact same disproportionality. We're seeing it all play out in the exact same way. The Lebanese health minister said that Israeli strikes uh, that hit nine hospitals and 45 health care centers it's a violation of international law and treaties. The Lebanese Red Cross said that an Israeli strike wounded four paramedics and killed a Lebanese army soldier as they were evacuating people uh, from the south. It said the convoy near the village of Taiba, uh, which was accompanied by Lebanese troops, was targeted Thursday despite coordinating uh, its movement with UN peacekeepers. Again, it sounds familiar. The reason it sounds familiar uh, is because there's a very specific pattern uh, that the Israeli military is following at the present moment. And that pattern is not unlike the pattern that we've seen uh, in um, in Gaza, in Lebanon before, in Syria, in Iraq, etc., from the United States uh, as well. And, and, and that pattern is first there is uh, a narrative. Uh, first of all, there's the, the kind of discursive, the, the, the de there's a demonization of the Lebanese people or of the Gazan people or of the Syrian people or of the Iraqi people. And because so much of our understanding collectively of brown people is grounded in an idea that they are barbaric and uncivilized, it seems as if any kind of attack, any kind of military intervention from the West is necessary and productive because if we don't do it, they're going to kill us. If we intervene, we can save them. We, Gayatri Spivak talked about this idea of, you know, uh, white men saving brown women from brown men, which becomes part of the imperialist impulse of the United States, at least the narration of the imperialist, imp Im imperialist impulses of the United States. We're going to go save them. We're going to liberate them. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Let's go liberate the Afghan women, right? And so forth and so on and so forth and so on. And then there's the, also the idea that Israel is isolated in a bad neighborhood. That's the constant argument, right? That there's a million Arab countries, only one Jewish state, and they are surrounded and bombarded even by the um, <clears throat> by these countries. And because of that, they have no choice but to defend themselves. Because of that, they have no alternative options. Um, the problem with that argument is 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 multiple. There are multiple problems, right? One is that they they ignore the argument ignores why Israel is a single uh, player in the neighbor in the quote unquote neighborhood in the way that it is. It ignores the occupation. It ignores the ethnic cleansing in Palestine. It ignores the depopulation of villages. It ignores the apartheid state. It ignores all the things that had to happen for the state of Israel to be formed in the first place. Because if, if if you don't start there, then yeah, it looks like Israel is just a uh, just surrounded by people that don't like us. It also it reinforces the idea that that the other nations are the are the provocateurs and that Israel is simply the victim. Think, uh, for example, about Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris's statement just a few days ago 
that Iran is an escalating force in the region. Wow. Whatever you think of Iran, whether you support Iran, whether you're critical of Iran, whether you hate Iran, whether you love Iran, whether you think Iran is right, whether you think Iran is wrong, all that is one thing, but there's no way to talk about Iran as a destabilizing force in the region without talking about the fundamental destabilizer in the region. It ain't, it ain't Hezbollah. All of the resistance efforts we've seen in the last year, whether it's what the Houthis or the Ansarullah are doing in the, in the Red Sea, whether it's what Hezbollah is doing in the North of Israel, or you know, if it's, whether it's what Hamas is doing, whether it's what uh, anybody's on, the Jibha, you know, whoever. All of it is a response to an illegal military occupation and a, and a bombardment and a siege. All of it is what's happening. Um, so it's a little it's a little rich to hear the United States, which has funded the occupation. It's underwritten economically and militarily and diplomatically the apartheid state to hear them say what the destabilizing force in the United in the Middle East is. The United States is a destabilizing force in the Middle East. This is the, the fundamental problem with um, with this type of uh, approach. 